Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. flyer here and today I'm going to demonstrate a even easier way to paint white this is basically the no gimmicks no frills get the units on the table white but it will look a lot better than just uh, dry brushing and slapping a bunch of paint on there and hoping for the best with a wash over the top so this uh, will not be a competition style or or you know, award-winning paint paint job. However, at uh, tabletop distances, if you have 12 of these out on the table, you're going to be really happy with it, and they're going to look really good. We're going to incorporate dry brushing into this, so that's where some of the uh, some of the pitfalls can happen, where a lot of folks try to dry brush white. And I'm going to show you how to do it successfully and minimize that uh, fuzziness and the graininess that can appear. So uh, the other added benefit to this paint scheme is that you can get this knocked out in an evening. It doesn't take very long, and it's not really technical doesn't require a huge amount of skill or experience anybody can do this and I'm going to use simple uh, techniques and I'm also going to use simple mediums and paints and things like that so that anybody can do it even without an aerosol primer uh, speaking of which uh, I'm going to use Viejo's uh, surface primer this is brush on I use this for airbrushing as well they've got it in white black and gray I'm going to use gray this time and there's a couple reasons why I'm doing that first off aerosol Spray primer can be picky depending on the humidity where you live and all that. Uh, the other issues that can arise is it's very easy to get a grainy texture on the miniature when it's done, uh, which is not a big deal necessarily as long as it's not too bad if you're just painting the panels. But if you're dry brushing, those little raised elements or areas, the graininess picks up the pigment that you're dry brushing on and then you get an even more grainy and built up caked on paint look. So we're gonna avoid that with brush on primer. Plus, you can buy this for the same prices of any bottle of paint. And if you're only doing a few miniatures, I mean, this will last a while. So, you know, you can pick whatever color you want. And then the other added benefit too is that in, uh, in the past, I've had some interactions with brush on primer and then washing over the, I'm sorry, not brush on primer, the uh, spray on primer and having issues with washes over that, not reacting the way that I wanted it to uh, in regards to like it was being put over paint. So I would have to prime, then put a base coat of paint and then do my wash, whereas this, this is our, this acts a lot more like paint. So it is a polyurethane. It does take about 12 hours to dry completely according to the instructions on the back. If you got a warmer climate or you gotta leave them in the sun or you got a hair dryer you wanna sit there and run with, go for it. Uh, airbrushing helps because it goes on thinner, but uh, follow the instructions. So do this the night before or the day before and get the primer on. So I've got three miniatures prepared. I'm gonna do all three. Uh, in concurrent with that, I am going to run a timer to show how long this takes. And I'm not gonna include drying time for washes or the primer, obviously, but I will show you how quickly this can be done and we're gonna fill out a lance um, without too much time involved. So you could knock this out in an evening or over the weekend if you wanted to. So uh, make sure you shake up your primer real good and get uh, a couple of uh, brushes that you're gonna wanna have. I've got my standard go-to. You see me use this brush all the time. It's a synthetic number four generic. Uh, it's great for washes and base coat applications. I've got a number two dry brush, basically a flat. It's smaller, you want a smaller one. And the reason is that we're gonna do a little more uh, dry brushing with detail work. It's not gonna be the large area. So that will take a little more time. But if you got something smaller like this, that's more ideal. And the softer, the better. You don't want it to be super, super firm. So it can be synthetic, that's fine. But uh, in fact, that's preferred for dry brushing because the synthetics last longer. Obviously you can see it's been used as a dry brush. And then I've got just a simple number one uh, even a zero, anything like that. This is for this is going to be for later when we're actually touching up the panels and things like that. So, three brushes, uh, some primer, and for the colors, since we're going to do white, I'm going to use ivory. Of course, that makes sense, right? You can use something like linen if you wanted to, something like that. Uh, what you really want to try to avoid, at least with this, is going with like an off-white or a pure white, simply because it's uh, too much. Uh, too soon you can but the nice thing is is when you use the ivory you can go back and because you have that 
more pure white available to you. If you wanted to edge highlights or touch up things and make them pop a little more, that's what that you can use that with because you haven't gone completely into white. Um, so, and then the other thing you're going to need is you're going to need some kind of wash. So, with regard to that, I'm going to use Army Painter Quick Shade Mid Brown, and I'm also going to add Quick Shade Mixing Medium to it to thin it out because you don't want it right out of the bottle for over the white, and I'll explain that later. This is a reddish brown, so it will look pink essentially when it's over the white, but that's intentional for the paint scheme I did because I have red brown stripes and it complements that really well. You can use any thinned light colored, I say, and I say light, basically not black based uh, wash. Uh, the soft gray that you see saw me make uh, on my last white video thinned out, that would work fine. Uh, you could use Agrax Earthshade if you wanted to, again, thin down. You can use water or you can use uh, the mediums. Uh, you can also use a, like a soft body black from our uh, secret weapon miniatures or anything But just don't use an ink and don't use uh, it straight out of the bottle and don't use it completely black based Se uh, Sepia would be another great one to use as well depending on the colors you want and what you are looking to get out of the actual end result and what I mean by that for instance is this is a sepia You can see it's a much lighter tone The panther like I said, was a reddish brown. And if you look on the back, you would be able to see it's got a little bit of a reddish hue, but because I've got red brown stripes, it actually really ties together very well. And then the areas where I actually used a black wash contrast even more. And then if you, you know, want to do the, the black uh, or the soft, uh, soft gray type wash, then you can get something like this. So it just depends on what you want the end result to be. That wash is basically going to set the, the the tone, if you will, and the value of the uh, overall finished miniature. So let's get started. All right, I've got my timer here. That's running. Primer in the pot, and I'm using it straight out of the bottle. And I'm gonna do two coats. So just uh, don't try to get super thick coverage on the first pass just get something that will bond with the uh, with the metal or the plastic and then that'll set a good base for the second coat you don't really always need to do that especially if you're gonna put a base color over your first layer of brush on primer but I like like it for a couple reasons because it allows me to get all the recesses and everything else filled in so I have good bond with uh, whatever paint I'm gonna put over it and in this case, it's also allowing me to have a nice, smooth, or more consistent base coat because we're going to use this primer uh, as a as a color for us, a little base material in there. So because we're going to use this base gray and just save ourselves the time, then that's why I'm going to do two coats just to get it a little bit more even, especially on the flatter panels and things like that, so it will show up. Uh, when the when the wash hits it won't look uneven so just kind of working it into every little area not not super concerned about any specific you know detail or anything like that because once it once it dries for I say about 20 to 30 minutes for this uh, first coat then you can go back and do the second one and then you really would want to let that cure overnight or do it in the morning and then paint you know paint in the evening however you want to do it but you do really want to let it completely set up it's this is a polyurethane based acrylic so it dries um, it basically stays flexible it's really tough I use it to edge uh, edge line in black with my bases and things like that because it's a little more durable than just straight black paint so there is a, it is different than paint. It, it does, it acts like paint in many ways, but it is, is not necessarily the acrylic paint that you're thinking of when you go and try to paint your miniatures. So uh, another thing to keep in mind too, is that your brush, um, you don't want to let that, it will stick, the, the bristles will stick together much, much more quickly if you don't keep it uh, clean. So, you know, if you, if you work slow or if you got to take a break or whatever, you got to clean your brush real quick um, just to keep that, uh, polyurethane based uh, primer from taking hold and then just you know ruining ruining probably what's a, a decent brush if you're 
interested in not losing than having to replace them. It's cheap and you don't care. Well, that's that's your own prerogative, but uh, you know. So in between miniatures, like you can see, I'm I'm almost finished with this one. That that's a fine amount of time. It's only been a few minutes, um, but if you if you stop or if you need to get you know something else done, clean it out thoroughly. Uh, either use an acrylic media uh, cleaner. Or, I mean, water's fine, but it will still dry. Um, you can see it's up here in the bristles, but I try not to let any of it stay on there just because it's it, it's not impossible to remove it, it's just more of a hassle. So, that's less time spent hobbying and more time cleaning something that I could have been more careful about. And then if, as you're brushing this on, the other thing you want to look for too are little, little areas that might get a little bubble here and there. If you get a little bubble on there, no big deal just kind of dab your brush in there you can always run it down on the on a paper towel or whatever to kind of thin it out that kind of that can happen sometimes if either you have a, a stiffer brush or if your if your primer is a little a little bit thin coming out of the bottle which you really don't need to do anything you don't need to thin it you shouldn't need to thin it unless it's I mean, just super thick and old and you've had it for forever but Now I'm just going back, touching up a couple of the areas that I know I'm, I've missed, and I'm looking for bubbles or areas where it might have pooled just because it'll take a lot longer to dry. So again, looking for just a thin initial coverage. At some point, if you you know see thin areas or things like that, and you keep going back and forth, you're just going to actually fight the primer as it's drying, and you'll get raised thick areas and tide pool areas and things like that. Like it's thinner on the shoulders right here, but I'm going to leave it for the second coat. So, Under the neck and in the arm joints and leg joints, things like that. That's where you might see a lot of those bubbles. So I'm gonna rinse my brush off, roll it in a paper towel just to get some of that primer out of the out of the bristles. And you can see it didn't didn't take any effort to come off. I just used water to take that out. But if you keep up on it, it won't be a problem. If you let it dry, you're gonna need to use uh, either an alcohol-based uh, cleaner or something else to uh, like a brush cleaner to get it out. So. And again, that's, it's not a big deal to clean your brush, it's just it takes away from your time that could be spent doing better things. So, Just using a light touch, I don't need to try to pound this into the, into the miniature. So it's, it's, it's possible that some of you maybe have never used a brush on primer. And again, it's, you just treat it like anything else, any, any other paint, you know, you're not looking for, to try to put it on thick and you know take your time but like I said this is great for anybody that maybe can't do aerosols where they are or, um, can't find or don't want to spend the money on a you know potentially $15 can of, of uh, primer uh, also again those folks that have areas where it's either high humidity or it's, you know, it's freezing cold outside or whatever uh, the, the environmental limitations this is a great alternative to that and again you've got gray black and white and as long as you you know, watch out for the little little tricks here and there that I showed you about things that can, can crop up. It works great. It's not a it's not a bad thing at all to use a brush on primer. And again, this also works if you have an airbrush, it does double duty. So you can use it as a brush on or you can use it as a air uh, airbrush primer. You do need to thin it through your airbrush though, so and you gotta thoroughly clean your airbrush afterwards because this this stuff will gum up the needle pretty good if you let it sit. If you finished your base, like I'm doing concrete rubble bases on this, so 
You could also use this to prime that as well. Plus it works if you're you got a little excess on your brush there, you can just run it out on the on the base work and manage the, the pooling and the amount on the actual miniature. Those bubbles I was talking about in the legs. The stiffer the brush, the more likely you are to get some of those bubbles as well. It's just based on the way the, the tip of the brush flicks and creates those little little wisps that form a bubble. But as long as you're looking out for it, it shouldn't be a problem. I'm averaging about well, it's like five minutes per miniature right now because I'm coming up on about ten minutes. So I mean it does take I guess slightly longer than obviously an aerosol can. But you'd have to do coats with that as well and still have to let it dry. So it's it's a necessary thing you gotta do, you gotta prime, otherwise the paint won't stick. Let's space real quick. If you're doing enough of these, I mean, you can potentially get to the point where by the time you're on your 8th or 12th one or however many you're doing, the first one's going to have be ready for that second coat without you even having to stop, which would be a nice assembly line. So if you're doing a company or a couple level 2s for appropriate unit there, then assembly line will, uh, will help you be much more efficient. All right, so I've uh, let these cure overnight. We've got the three of them primed with two coats of the brush on primer. So they'll be ready to go for the next step, which is gonna be the wash. For the wash itself, again, we're gonna use, I'm gonna use Mid Brown Quick Shade by Army Painter. And I'm also gonna add the mixing medium as well to thin it out so that it doesn't overpower the white, or gray, I should say, in this case. Make sure you shake these up real well. Um, like I said, don't just don't use anything super dark or based on black. I do about a two to one ratio on this. So for every two drops of the quick shade, I'm gonna use one drop of this mixing medium. And you'll see here in a second how reddish brown it can really be. See that red color. That's what we're looking for right there. It almost looks like a like a cloudy burgundy color. Okay. I know you guys are thinking, oh no, why are you gonna do that? But that's that's what we're looking for. Should be kind of translucent. There's a good example of what it looks like. Okay. So now it's just uh add it to the miniatures. And I'm using the number four synthetic brush I have here. I use this thing for base coats and for washing. And you can see as it goes on, you're gonna be like, oh man, I'm making this this gray mech pink. It's okay, if you're doing if you're doing those reddish brown stripes or highlights or accents, or this is a color that 
you know suits you and what you think uh, the grooves and cracks of a light colored mech would look like then go for it some somebody might not like this kind of uh, color and and honestly I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it or not but I knew ahead of time that I was gonna do those dark reddish brown stripes for the the unit that I painted them for so I knew it at the very least it was going to complement the other details on the miniature if it was going to be pure white alone I probably almost assuredly would not have done this color but there are some uh, some folks that like you know like the different styles and the different colors and the different tones and that's fine do what do what you like but like I said you have this is this is where you're setting what the cracks and the crevices and everything else are going to look like and they're going to it's going to maintain that color throughout the process as we whittle away at it with the with the white over the or the ivory over the top but if you look you will see this this color will will be a part of the paint scheme so if you want a gray color use gray if you want more brown use brown if you want to mix something up and see how it works go for it same rules apply for this for washing make sure you get the all the cracks and crevices I'm not trying to just slather it on and get it over you know craziness but I do need to cover the entire model I'd want to get every little spot just so that it's got a good uh, build up in all the little recesses and then I'm just you can use a paper towel or whatever I'm just going in and finding those areas that don't need it to be all pulled up and if you have the flat areas you can run the brush over that real quick and kind of wick it away that'll help with the dry brushing uh, it's not absolutely necessary it just does save a little bit of effort later on and I think it does help the brush just be careful not to wick away too much and take it out of the the, the grooves and the recesses because that's part of what we're doing here so and if it's missing some in some spots you know obviously add a little more but it's at, at one point though this will start to dry enough to where once you start messing with it it's gonna leave pool uh, tide pool marks so that uh, medium that I added helps a lot with with that so you can see how it's mostly mostly smooth in all these areas Once you're happy with it, put it down and leave it alone. You do want to let this dry completely, so if you're doing assembly line, can't say for certain if it's going to be completely dry if you're doing 8 or 12 of these or or what I know for a fact it wouldn't be done if you just did four but this is something where you'd want to maybe do this and then go have, have a meal or throw a movie on or something like that and then come back to it when it's completely dry you don't really want any of this to be active or still wet when you're trying to put the, the dry brush and the white over it will smear and spread and it will ruin everything and then you won't be happy and you'll be telling me I don't know what I'm doing so avoid that Always let your washes dry completely. See, I'm really just getting that initial application on, letting it go where it wants to go. It's going over this primer real, real well. Again, that's that's why part of the reason why I did the brush on primer in this in this case. Spread it out and get the get the areas you want to be darker. Make sure they get a good amount of wash there. And then for areas that you like, oh man, I really want that to be dark later on. Still put the wash on there, like so the canopy or the missile ports or the gun barrels, because we will go in and do a a little touch of um, black wash just to accent that. Same thing with like the arm, the little like with the rubber boots, or if you think of them as rubber. Or whatever it is that you might want to do the joints and things like that uh, I'll show you how to do or how to get the same effect on the panther 
on the rest of these. You do want to work quickly, only do one at a time before you stop and assess and look at where your wash buildup is because you don't want to forget about something and then come back to it and have it all just pooled up. So on this skirt thing here, I'm coming back to it real quick so that I don't forget and I'm going to push a little more into this crack there as I wick away. See how I'm just taking off the high edges there. Tops of the shoulder pads is another good one. That's going to get definitely going to be a, high, a light color so you can you know, try to remember that and then these these are pulling up a little too much so and if you're not happy with something you can always take a fine brush later on after it's dry and just put a little touch where you want it to to be a little darker if you missed a spot or it isn't quite doing it for you That uh, quick shade medium, though, as opposed to say water, does buy you some time to to work the the shading over. So I do recommend it, but if you don't have it, it's not the end of the world. You can still thin the uh, the quick shade without it. Just maybe work in sections, maybe do the top half or one arm or two arms or whatever works for you. But just be careful. And if you live in a drier climate too, if it's going to be place where you find that your paints dry really quickly then you can be be cognizant of that because once the once it dries you really don't have a whole lot of maneuver to uh to do anything to fix it so other than paint over it and that's just that's just more work so i'm trying to avoid making you have to do extra work as you hold it at different angles the Will, or the uh, media will pool in certain areas. Get the butt. Gravity will do things that you might not expect. So you do need to kind of work in one spot and then go and check and see if there's something that you might have missed or where it might have shifted and you weren't expecting there to be wash there. So. happy with that. I got a good amount of shadow in some of the darker areas. Some of the areas I want dark, I should say. Looks good. So it's taking about five minutes per per each one of these. So you can budget that time or however you want to think about it. I'll add it up at the end so you all know how long it takes to do one miniature from start to finish or one miniature from the start of this phase which you know this is technically when you start the, the painting but you know if you want to know how long it's going to take to do this whole thing from bare metal to to the end then I'll give you both times I'm kind of curious too because I'm wanting this to be a relatively quick and palatable amount of work and a process that doesn't take day after day or you can only work on it and then you know before you get bored of going over every single panel Five minutes for each of these to uh, get the wash applied and then you're gonna want to let them dry like I said completely so set them aside the other thing you can do too while uh, while these are drying if you want is you can work on the the base all right guys so like I said before timing right now looking at uh, about almost 45 minutes for three miniatures and that's including the priming time right now so it, all total every step right now has been about five minutes per miniature 
I'm gonna take out some secret weapon concrete. This is some really cool stuff. You need to shake it up really well though because it settles really, really good. So if you have an agitator, like a piece of sprue or a little uh, glass bead or whatever, you put it in the bottom there. That's how I mark these. Shake it up really, really well. You wanna get uh, some good uh, mixture because this pigment works really, really well when it's thoroughly mixed. So I'm gonna throw some in a dish here. And uh, like I said before, even though this is wet, the wash is going to work downward, so it's, it shouldn't wick up or anything. And even then, anything that does kind of work its way up is going to be is going to look like dirt. So I'm just taking this directly from the bottle and throwing it over this base. So what will happen is that while this is drying, the base wash that we're doing will also be drying. We're going to do two coats of this anyway, so don't. Uh, don't worry about, oh man, it's not going to look like concrete, but just nice and nice and thick. Let it pool, let it do its thing. Take a little bit out of this crater here just because it'll just take too long to dry. I'm putting around the edges, but I, I normally I, I'm going to black out the edges, but uh, just spreading it out a little bit. And that's it. Now you can just let that whole thing dry. Just move on to the next one. This would work if you're doing urban bases or if you're trying to have it be on like sidewalks or even streets. I did, uh, I just used some plumber's epoxy putty to kind of sculpt a little bit of a broken and damaged stone, kind of like they're going through maybe a old war-torn city or something like that so that it looks kind of uneven and already been messed up by impacts with the craters and all that so that's the effect I'm going for a little bit of pooling is okay by the feet but just make sure it's not super uh, built up there you do want it to darken but you don't want it to look like he's standing in a puddle of concrete or something like that so You can also do the concrete over a darker color if you want it to not take two coats, but this is what I did with the panther when I was kind of messing around, my first time messing around with this concrete color. So I'm going to do the same thing to make all four of them match. I'll probably experiment with this color a little more. I like this, this secret weapon concrete so far. I'm pretty, pretty darn happy with it. See how it does over maybe dark gray or black or something later on. Now we'll let, uh, we'll let those dry. That was basically another minute for each of these, so. Moving right along. Come back when they're dry. All right, guys, so now you probably noticed once your uh, washes are dry that, uh, oh look, your mechs are pink. So don't worry, we're gonna get through that. Again, that's just a byproduct of the color of wash that I chose to use but don't worry about it this is this is just a middle of the phase for us to get there I poured some model color ivory into a cap I've got my number two Ironwind Metals uh, dry brush and what I'm gonna do now is actually add a little bit of water to the paint I want a thinner mix for this and it's it's a little different than probably what you think conventional dry brushing would be but I uh, promise you it'll be it'll make sense so I'm gonna get it pretty 
pretty thin. Okay, so I'm looking at, yeah, there we go. What, I, what I'm trying to avoid by doing this is the clumping and the buildup of texture. So we're gonna have to dry brush a little more than you probably think you would on a normal color or, or what you maybe are associating dry brushing with. I've also got a paper towel off camera here, but uh, it, it washes out the white, so um, it'll be off camera, but I will be drying my brush and I'll demonstrate that here in a little bit. But um, So you're gonna load the brush. Okay, You're gonna do the standard, get most of the paint off on the, pa on the paper towel, getting most of it off. Okay, and you're gonna get a feel for the consistency of the paint. And now you're gonna use a light touch. You don't need to go and do anything like super aggressive. All I'm doing now is just taking that semi-thinned paint and running it over the surfaces. And you'll see it, it'll start to change the color of the, of the, the surface. Don't try to get it all in one pass. Don't try to do too much at once. I am trying to go perpendicular to the lines like you would with any other dry brush technique to prevent it from going into the recesses, but I'm not I'm not trying to push the brush into it real hard. I'm not being super aggressive. I'm just letting this first layer of paint start to do its work over the area that we did with the wash. And if if you can, if at all possible, try to try to work from the, a top down angle because that'll catch some of the higher sides, which will be brighter. Uh, if this were having natural light illuminating it, um, you know, to try to get that same effect. So what you'll do, or at least what I'll, I'll do, is I'm going to work on each individual area and let it let it dry a little bit. So you think, oh, yeah, dry brush. The paint, the paint still does need to, to dry and set a little bit. So. You can't just go in, dry brush, come right back and do it again, um, because if you're too aggressive with it, it'll actually take some of the paint that you'd put on there off. So, and then periodically, I'm just gonna take a little dab of paint. I'm not loading no more than half the, uh, the bristles there. And then I'm gonna go over to my paper towel, again, take most of it off, and then come back and do the same thing. Again, try to, that's a little too much paint still. You'll see it streak if it's if it's too damp still. The, the benefit of this though is that even if you do get some into the recesses, because you're working so thin, you know you're not you're likely not going to get paint over and over and over and over again and into the recesses enough to really to brighten them up to where they won't at least show a contrast. So that's what will give you the nice transition from the highlighted area into the darker recessed areas that. You know you want to have with this this dry brush effect. And you can see on this area right here, there isn't any paint in that recess. It looks like I missed this spot. So what I'm going to do is go back and touch it up with some of that wash later on. You can just use a fine brush and just dab it right into the into the recess, and it should crawl into the recess areas. But yeah, I'm just gonna slowly work my way up work around the model don't try to stay in the same spot over and over again and just get paint onto the surfaces that would definitely be catching the light and then as I work down I'm not trying to jam it into this area right here on the recessed part of the kneecap because that would have shadow so I'm just gonna add a little bit here this way and then come down this way and then I'm not really gonna try to force it into that area and that'll just create a natural transition. So this is going to take at least two, maybe three, depending on the color of uh, base wa uh, wash that you used or how dark it is, and to what level of brightness you want to go with the white. So now it's just a bang it out and get the get the paint on the model type of situation. So I'm doing the legs first. Getting that initial setup of a uh, color. 
And then as I work my way around, I'll come back and do the same leg that I did or to start out with. And then I'll have that second coat on it. Whatever you need to do to keep track of, you know, the, the level of uh, paint you've applied. I mean, you know, it's not, it doesn't have to be perfectly even on everything, but you should obviously try to make sure you don't miss certain areas. And now you can see as I start to hit this area again, there'll be a bit of a transition. I apologize if the white washes out a little bit. It's really hard to, to video. It's hard to photograph and it's definitely hard to video. Hopefully I'll be able to show these transitions to you at the end with the photographs. But that's it. And you can use this dry brushing technique with any any paint. It doesn't necessarily need to be white. But what, like I said, what we're really preventing is getting too much paint into a recess to block out the shaded areas. And because it's thin and we're working essentially in dry brushed layers, it doesn't get clumpy. It doesn't add texture to the model it stays smooth and with white it's hard to keep that way when it's not thinned so we're making the adjustment to our technique and the, the level the uh, consistency of the paint we're applying to mitigate that and keep it as smooth as possible and again this is definitely where if you were dry brushing over a textured you know if you've got a little bit of texture when you're spray painting your primer on that's this where you wouldn't want it to to show up so that's the method to my madness when it comes to this technique. You can see it's definitely starting to build up to a white. You can see we got the areas with just, just the wash, the one layer, now the second layer. And this one, this one might take three. I say three, you know, it's not, I, I can't count the number of passes or whatever. Really, um, what we're going to do is once you're happy with the outer areas, which is what the driver's gonna catch, we are gonna come back and we are going to quickly, and I mean quickly, throw thinned paint onto the center of these main panels. And what that does is it brings up a, a bright, brighter area, and it, what it will do is really smooth out any of the, you know, we're gonna get texture with the dry brushing. It, you, you might not be able to see it as well, but it's gonna smooth that out as well. So. That's, and I say that's not even, it's not really necessary, but you'll you'll be happy with the result if you give it a try. So if you wanted to take this a little bit further, which is what I did on that Panther, so we're, I'm gonna demonstrate it at least and show you really how easy it is to do. But you, you know, you don't even have to do all the panels, anything that you think should be brighter. So any of the top side or wherever you wanna um, have the light or the white be more intense from where you would think it would be brighter then it gets you starting to think about the way light works and what would be shaded, what would be brighter, what wouldn't be as bright, so on and so forth. So it's it's a good thing to at least attempt and try and you really can't, like I said, mess it up. It's it's very simple. You just take some thin paint just like we're using right now and you take a that smaller detail brush and you go to town on the, the flat surfaces to kind of smooth them out and give them a little bit more uniformity. And you can also use it to catch areas or and focus on areas that you really wanted to be brighter. So for instance, the top of these knee, uh, knee joints here, the circles, I'm definitely gonna hit those. I might not do the bottom ones, but I'll definitely do the top. And then on these panels, when I go to push the paint, I'll probably push it on the high side. And I'll show you all that later on. But for now, this is the, this is the grind. Just gotta get the dry brush, but it's a, it's a patient, it's a slow paced dry brush. It's not a rapid, I'm gonna get a, you know, 30 of these done in 30 minutes type of type of pace, but it's it's well worth it. You don't have to spend as much time sitting there painstakingly looking at details and trying to get your paint exactly where you want it to go. And you still will get some transition effects because you are using the, the dry brush technique to your advantage, so.
So that's the completion of the dry brush portion. I'm sitting there in about another 16 minutes or so for a miniature. I'm just going to do the next two, get those done, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, let me catch you up here. So one minor thing I wanted to cover is I preemptively put that concrete wash on the base and I realized that I'd actually put a layer of neutral gray down first before I actually did the wash over the top. So what I've done, and it's different than what you can see here, is neutral gray and then the concrete wash over the top of it. And uh, I've let that, let that dry. So uh, we're gonna start with this dry brushed blackjack. I've got some ivory in the pot here. I've added some water to it, um, about a third, maybe half, depending on how thick it is out of the bottle. You can see it's got some pretty good coverage. It's not uh, super thick. And then uh, I'm just using my number one brush. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna look at the model and pick what is gonna have the most highlights. So I'm gonna take any high edge. And I'm just gonna just quickly go over and put basically a, a, a horizontal stripe. And not that I want it to be striped, but I want this is anything that's the high edge or anything that I want to be brighter is going to get this first initial layer of paint. And I know I'm starting kind of in the middle of the leg, start from you know wherever you're comfortable with, but then I'm just gonna continue on through. I'm gonna pick anything that I definitely know I want brighter. And try to keep that that edge you know on the high side. So you know maybe do half the panel and just do the upper portion if that's what you'd like or the lower portion depending on how you're letting your light show. You can do the edges too if you'd like. And then remember work the brush in the direction that you want the paint to end up the thickest. And what this will do is as it's drying it's going to obviously leave an area of contrast and highlight. It's going to show that paint because we're putting this um, brushed on ivory versus the dry brushed on ivory. So it's going to be um, more vibrant. And we want that because we are going to go back after this and we're going to do a layer over the entire panel or most of the entire panel and you'll see how that effect works in giving you essentially a blended or highlighted uh, appearance there I'm just not being I'm not being super super picky I'm just kind of grabbing grabbing panels I'm working fairly fairly quickly, but I'm not trying to be in a rush. I'm just picking out the stuff that I know for a fact that I want to be brighter. Maybe the outer edges and the upper edge on this one. You can change it up. You don't have to be 100% consistent with everything. Do what looks good to you. So on these sweeping panels here on the back, I'm going to actually do the lower side. You can see there is a trying to keep the light where it can show what I'm doing. And on any of these ridges and things like that, you can just use the edge of your brush. I got a little too wet there. It's all right. A little bit of water. Wick it away, let it dry, and then we'll come back to it later. Now I'm just going to do this over the entire model. Anything I want to show some more 
pop. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on the inner legs, but I'm gonna hit a couple of the edges there because it, it will look a little weird if it's still kind of reddish on the insides of the legs. But you know, if you're doing the underside of a arm or something like that, you know, you probably don't want to put too much in that area. But again, have a have an idea of how much you want to take this highlighting or this detailing to so that you know where you'll be when you finish. So if you know you're going to do like a white edge highlight, then maybe you'd want to do a little more. The nice thing is too is with the paints kind of thin, even if you don't come back and hit all the panels. That's the nice thing too, is you don't have to hit all the panels on the second pass. The ones that you definitely want brighter, sure, you're gonna to wanna to go and cover those one more time, but some of these are gonna be, this is the last bit of white paint they're gonna get. side I'm just gonna do pretty much the entire thing so the tops of these legs which are probably hard for you to see right now with the angle I have to hold it at but the squared off blocks on the tops of these legs same thing that I would do on the tops of these arms here but you can see it's starting to get essentially a line on those high edges and some of those larger panels are getting you know some some consistent solid color or, well it's white so lack of color but you can use this with any this technique will work with any other color but Oops. Once you get an area done, try not to go back and do, the, do it again so that you can keep the result consistent. Kind of skipping around here and there, but I'm just kind of working in circles. So don't forget to periodically rinse your brush. This is white. White likes to complicate things by drying fast and not always playing nice. So don't let your brush get all gunked up. So I'm just looking for areas that I might have missed. I'm not necessarily going back over anything that I did previously. At least I'm trying not to, but I'm actually just looking for places that need just a touch more where I didn't maybe put any on at all. Look on the inside of this back leg right here. part of the panel try to leave a little bit still the original color of the darker side so that it does allow that contrast to show Don't try to white it all out I'm not trying to push the brush into these little corners here I'm just letting the paint hit the hit the easy easy to access parts I 
All right, so get a look over the miniature. See if you've missed any areas. Take a look and see if you've got any of those accents and highlights that you, where you want them. And then let it uh, dry completely. So while you're doing that, you may have to add a little more water to your paint because the ivory, just like white, will dry out. If anything, you want it as thin or even slightly thinner than what you had it before. So. took about 15 minutes. I'm not going to show you doing the other two miniatures just because it's going to get repetitive, but uh, there's the clock running here. Um, so now since we started on the low side, I'm going to go back to that. And now what we're going to do is take this thinned color and now we're going to do the majority of the panel. So what's going to happen is the darker side will have a little bit of that transition from the part we left unpainted and then this will reinforce the edge highlight that we did in the previous step. And you may not want to touch certain panels, you may just want to leave them as they are, but there are also maybe ones where you think, yeah, I'd like to have a little more blend. And this is one where you can go back and do a couple more uh, approaches over it. You can see these kneecaps are going to start to have a nice little bit of a uh, blend. In fact, I'll show you on the Wolverine. The transition there on the kneecap is all the same way I just showed you how to do it. So rounded surfaces will take to it really well if you want to do you know, flat, flat surfaces, which, you know, mechs usually are, then keep your paint thin, work up in the direction of the higher, uh, or the brighter intensity. So for now, it's basically a, a do it over again. And in some areas, I'm just going to touch just a little bit more paint just to add a little bit to it so what I get is a brighter outer edge and then these recessed areas are just going to bite by nature of having recessed areas they took to the wash but then I'm just going to add a little only a little bit more of the white or the uh, ivory I should say and that will again make it look it'll give a false sense of, of more depth than it's actually there which is what you really kind of want to do for this scale you can't really get true depth so unless it's sculpted that way. But this, this step can be as slow or as fast as you want it to be. You can hit a couple areas, come back, and then do them again. Uh, I'll tell you right now, I'll do the kneecaps probably twice, the tops of the shoulders, this upper surface here on this torso, and then the head, because those areas are kind of focal points. So just keep your, keep your paint thin. If it starts to get thick, though, what's going to happen is it's going to it's going to blur, it's going to block out that that smooth blend that you were looking to have or non-blend think of it as a paint application but this really makes the whole scheme come together because now you've essentially got three colors because the white is so thin, that previous layer lends itself to being, to acting like a third color.
is also a good time that if you want to do edges, you can use the perpendicular of your brush and take it on the, on the edges here just to give a little more crispness to the outsides. It's easy to do. You don't have to do much of anything other than keep your brush perpendicular to whatever you're trying to highlight and just not have too much um, thinned or loose paint. And as you can see, I'm just finishing up here. Some loose paint to tie together the highlights and blends there for the appearance of blends. And then what I'll do is once it's dry, is I'll take a look at it and see if there's any areas I want to hit again. Like I said, the tops of the shoulders. Definitely going to push the paint out to the outer edges there. Excuse me, top of the head. Trying to make that pop a little more. And if you're just using thin paint, it's really easy. You just, I mean, really just put the edge of your brush onto a edge and then let the thin paint kind of do the work. It's, you know, you don't have to fight it. I know the camera washes out the, the white here, but uh, like I said, I'll hopefully get the photographs to show a little more of what I've done, but you'll see it when you do it in person. You'll understand what I'm trying to explain here. got highlights completed at a quick glance they look like a nice nice level of blend your miniature is white to a degree that you would say yeah that's a white miniature and I've got two of them if I were to add stripes or complementary colors, things like that, that is how we would get to that base level. In the next video, I'll show how to take it onto the level of this uh, panther here with the Benjamin regular stripes and the details that I did with that and the steps to get that, uh, that final appearance. Thanks for watching. As always, subscribe, like our Facebook page. Look forward to hearing your comments and questions, and we'll see you next time. Shutdown sequence initiated.